Um, first of all, uh, next Sunday, Mar Martin Luther King Sunday, is our food drive. And it is a citywide food drive um, to support the food pantries here in Elgin. There are bags like this at the back by the door for you to pick up and fill and bring items next Sunday for this food drive. Um, and also, if you would rather just use your own plastic bags, that's fine too. Um, it doesn't have to be in this paper bag. Then um, next weekend is our youth retreat. We are going to Michigan. And um, so if you, have, if you are a youth and you have not signed up yet, please do so with Shannon or with And um, also, um, please take note of everything that is in here. Um, our luncheon is today, immediately following this worship service. We've got all kinds of crock pot dishes downstairs today. So come and eat with us and support our youth as they um, are striving to go on a mission trip this summer to Red Lake, Minnesota to work at the Native American Reservation. And then finally, today um, is our, the kickoff of our Live Love Symposium. We are so excited about this, and so is the city. We, are, we cannot believe the response we've had. We have 100 people signed up right now to join us today at 5 o'clock for Live Love. And um, it's a dinner, and then it's followed by our speaker, Jaime Garcia, um, as we learn about who is our neighbor and how can we be welcoming to our neighbor. We've given Rich um, a few more gray hairs as he's been tr uh, trying to figure out food for 100 people, and we keep adding to his list. If you have not signed up yet to um, come, we hope that you will come. Just come knowing that you might not be able to eat because you didn't already sign up. But um, it's a good, good way for you to know to sign up for next week in advance. You can either throw your name in the offering plate today and say, we'll be here next week for dinner. Or you can call into the church office or you can sign up online. So we're very excited about this and we feel like we've touched a nerve in the community and that there are a lot of people interested in this discussion. Good morning. Well, that was pathetic. Good morning. There we go. That's much better. Uh, Happy New Year to all of you. A couple of things. First of all, if you have not uh, had a chance to donate to our Christmas Eve offering, uh, it's not too late. Uh, we are within about a little less than $200 of our goal of $8,000. Uh, some of the money will go to uh, help... Uh, uh, sponsor parenting classes through Coleman School, uh, as, and then the other part will go to uh, the Literacy Connection here in town. All, uh, all our uh, emphasis on immigration and, and uh, working with immigrants this year. So we hope that if you haven't given, that you will do so. And since we're uh, just a little less than 200 bucks, somebody pony that up so we can go over the top. Uh, anyhow, we hope that you'll uh, help us out with that. Uh, this afternoon, not only does the Live Love Symposium begin at 5, but the way begins at 4 o'clock. Uh, usually we have the meal and then the way, but because of the symposium, we're having the way and then uh, the meal. You can, uh, if, uh, the, if you are new to the uh, First Congregational Church uh, community, if you um, want to deepen your spiritual life, if you just need a reboot, uh, if you're new to the Christian faith, uh, this, the way is for you, four o'clock, uh, and it should be a wonderful time of being together, and we hope that uh, you'll do that and ask me questions afterwards if you are interested. Uh, if you're a guest in our service today, we want to say that you're extra special to us, 
and we hope that you'll find a card just like this in the pew rack or there's more back on the table back there. Please fill that out and drop it in the offering plate so we can stalk you. No, we're not going to do that. Uh, we, just, we just want a record of your visit uh, so we can know uh, who you are. Are there other announcements this morning? All right, uh, we have the last of our video r and updates available today. So uh, Matt, if you'd start that up, please. Good morning. With me this morning is one of our former church moderators, Pat Siegel. And we're here to share still more information with you about the r and process. This is our sixth and final report. Our goal today is to provide you with a wrap-up report summarizing all of the countless hours of work that have gone into the r and process to date and to prepare each of you for the annual meeting which will take place on the last Sunday this month. Over the past six months we've tried to share with you the details of the vision for a new FCC, taking Elta's oldest and best church and moving it in a responsible way towards a 21st century church that can attract and retain millennials and young families encourage discipleship, and make a meaningful impact in the community we serve. We hope you agree we're doing so without jettisoning those things that make us great. It's been a big job with lots of moving parts. First, let's review the process used to get here. We started the r, &R process with a church-wide Lenten study in 2016 using Michael Piazza's book, Vital Vintage Church, and continued with teams gleaned from each group who worked through the summer to come up with recommendations, some of which we began implementing last fall. The Council then began discussions about how to transform those recommendations into a long-term plan, which led to two weekend-long sessions with David Ezekiel to make our plan more strategic and comprehensive. Finally, for the past eight months, we've been working to implement the many, many changes and to lay the groundwork for the upcoming annual meeting, where we will ask each of you to approve next year's budget and new bylaws, and elect new church officers and leaders. Next year, the process will continue as we draft detailed rules and policies to finalize our new approaches. Throughout this process, we've tried to be transparent, provide the congregation with monthly r, &R updates, seek input from each of you, answer your questions and address any concerns that you might have. I hope you are as excited about the potential these changes offer for each of us individually and all of us collectively to grow as disciples and thrive as a church. This process is not complete and never really will be. We intend to create a church culture that works to seek out and implement improvements constantly. Change is an inevitable feature of our lives today and we need to be prepared to identify necessary changes and, ad to, and to adapt to changing circumstances. We need to be listening, innovative, responsive, nimble, efficient, and effective. Over the next year, we will continue to implement these new policies and structures fully, especially the church's shift to policy governance. We will execute this year's theme and plan carefully for next year's theme and we will be launching a comprehensive board development process intended to ensure each church leader is fully equipped to excel at their responsibilities. Please let us know right away if you have any additional feedback or suggestions. Doing so will make the annual meeting go more smoothly and more quickly. Finally, we would like to thank everyone for the countless hours they've put in to get us to this point. Our moderator, Lauren, pastors, council and ministry members, and the many congregants that offered feedback or suggestions. Together, you have positioned FCC Elgin for growth and success as a community of disciples. Have a lovely day. All right. Um, that will also be on the website. It'll also be on the email blast if you'd like to look at it again. Find somebody you haven't spoken to and tell them, hey, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, on life's journey, you are welcome here. No matter who you are, come and join with us. 
We're united in the church of Christ. Let's remember that guided by the Holy Spirit, the purpose of First Congregational United Church of Christ in Elgin is to seek God's truth, practice Christ's teachings, and love others unconditionally. God is still speaking. Are you listening? I invite all who are able to stand and join me in this morning's call to worship. We gather wondering where we will find the babe born in Bethlehem. We will find the babe in the laughter of children, in the wisdom of grandparents. We gather asking, where will we find the child of Christmas? We will find the child where the needy are gifted with hope, where the oppressed are set free. We gather wanting to know where we will find the Christ who has come for us. We will find our hope where fear is overwhelmed by grace, where hatred is overwhelmed by love, where all people are overwhelmed by joy. <laughs>
join me in the prayer of the day. We have heard of your grace, shaper of stars, from those set free, from injustice, from our children who whisper of your joy, from greeters of dawn's fresh start, from late risers who listen to the stories of the needy. We have heard of your light, bright star of the morning, which can illumine the shadows of our lives, which can show the path to God's heart, which can point the way to where we become servants of the gospel. We have heard of your promised peace, wisdom's radiance, that peace which can end war, as well as heal our hearts, that peace which can conquer our fears and flood us with faith, that peace which can enter our lives and overwhelm us with hope. We have heard of you, God, in community, holy in one, and will proclaim your glory to all. I'm really happy to be here today. <laughs> it's my first outing. <laughs> tell, them, tell them what I had done. Um, I had uh, a tear in my meniscus on my left knee, and I had surgery right after Christmas. So today's my first time I'm out by myself. So it's pretty cool. Thank you. And thank you for your prayers, and thank you for everything. I appreciate it. This morning's reading comes from Exodus 16, 1 through 8. It's in your Pew Bible, page 62, and it's in the large print on page 78. The whole congregation of the Israelites set out from Elam, and Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to him, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. The Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them, whether they will follow my instructions or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as what they gathered on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we when you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard you the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but the Lord. Our second reading today comes from Matthew 14, 
22 through 33, that's found on page 892 in your pew Bible, or page 19 in your large print. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You have little faith. Why do you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. May the Lord add his blessing to this morning's reading.
Whenever Penny and I watch a TV show done by Chuck Lorre Productions, like Big Bang Theory or Young Sheldon, we've learned to pause the picture just as the credits finish. Thank God for DVRs. So we can read one of the producer's so-called vanity cards. If you don't stop the picture, it goes by just like that, and there's way too much to read. Now, the vanity card is usually a little hilarious soliloquy, but occasionally it's rather touching and poignant. The other night it was a poem. Matt, if you'd advance the slide. Modernity's scary, antiquity's worse, can't go forward, can't reverse. So here's a plan to ease your unknowing. Ride the horse in the direction it's going. Words to live by, right? I looked it up. It's a poem written by somebody named Rajat Singh. And on this first Sunday of 2018, I think those words are particularly pertinent. Modernity's scary. Antiquity's worse. Can't go forward. Can't reverse. So here's a plan to ease your unknowing. Ride the horse in the direction it's going. You know, I've reached that age now where I have more years behind me than ahead of me. And Penny is working really hard to keep me from becoming one of those old retired men who prattles on incessantly about the good old days and yells at the neighbor kids to get off my lawn. The world has changed so much. And church life has changed so much that I could easily settle down into a world of nostalgia and just park myself in the easy chair of what used to be. At our Donahue family hootenanny after Christmas, some of us who were play making music and are getting rather long in the tooth found it hard to play and sing some of the songs because of all the memories that bubbled up amidst the music. As we sang, Will the Circle Be Unbroken? In beautiful four-part harmony, by the way. I just couldn't look at the portrait of my dad hanging on the wall. I knew my cousins were thinking about their dad, and we were all thinking about our grandparents and days when life was simpler and possibilities seemed endless. So I sympathize with those who say they want to make America great again. Like them, I would love to return to a time when my world was centered almost exclusively in family, church, and community. Yet at the same time, I doubt many of my African-American friends would be keen on returning to those days of my childhood in the Deep South when all white schools like I attended got most of the resources and the all black schools got all the leftovers. I doubt any of my LGBT friends would want to return to my childhood days when they had to hide their identities and pretend to be something they were not every day of every year. I doubt any of the women that I know would want to return to my childhood days when gender roles were etched in stone and sexual harassment was the price women paid for the privilege of earning a paycheck significantly less than their male co-workers. You see, when you start talking about making something great like it was before, you have to engage in selective memory. Nostalgia has definite shortcomings. When the Israelites got hungry out in the wilderness, they engaged in selective memory about their former lives in Egypt. They said, oh, we sat by the flesh pots and we ate our fill of bread and they whined. We don't like it out here in the wilderness. Moses, we bet you brought us out here just so we could die of starvation. Now, never mind that they were enslaved back in Egypt. Never mind that Pharaoh had ordered the annihilation of their newborn sons. No, in their minds now, everything was moonlight and roses back there in Egypt. Making Egypt great again actually meant the Israelites going back to slavery. The year 2018 won't be great by trying to return to a past that's dead and gone, a past that had some wonderful times as well as some awful times. 2018 will only be great if we live the life we're given now. It'd be great if we could 
take some risks and take advantage of the opportunities that come around to us. Many years ago, when my daughters were in high school, my family and I took a trip to Edinburgh, Scotland. And one day we were studying the bus schedule, trying to figure out which route was going to take us back to our hotel, and we just couldn't make any sense of it, when along came a bus, and it stopped, and the doors opened, and my wife said, well, let's just get on this one. I said, well, we don't know where it's going. She said, meh, and got on the bus. My daughter's two were along right behind her, so what was I going to do? I got on the bus too. And you know that bus started taking us around to Edinburgh, to all the non-touristy places. We saw parts of that town that we would have never seen otherwise. Plus, we struck up a conversation with a young lady named Elaine, I'll never forget her name, who was an absolute delight to talk to. I wish I could tell you from the pulpit the information she told us about Scottish weddings. But suffice it to say, it has something to do with what a Scotsman wears under his kilt. If you want the full quote, see me after church. And after a while, that bus driver stopped and pointed to our hotel just a few blocks away. Now, we would have missed that whole experience if we hadn't taken the risk of grabbing an opportunity right in front of us. Why are we so afraid to live the life that's here? Oh, sure, it's an unknown. Sure, it can be scary. But if we really believe we are held in the arms of God, what do we have to be afraid of? Think about old Peter in today's reading from Matthew 14. Jesus invited him to take a risk, grab hold of a possibility, step into a unique experience by stepping out of a boat onto the Sea of Galilee and walking to Jesus. And he was doing great. And they took, until he took his eyes off of Jesus. When he focused on the strong wind whirling around him, his rational, button-down, pragmatic mind took over and he thought to himself, this is nuts. What was I thinking? And he sank beneath the waves like the wreck of the Hesperus. And about the time he was going under for the third time, Jesus snatched him from a watery grave and scolded, you have a little faith, why did you doubt? Why indeed? He doubted because the whole thing was crazy. He doubted because this sort of thing just isn't done. He doubted because decent people who were raised right don't grab hold of foolish possibilities. He doubted because society frowns on folks who will not succumb to living their lives in quiet desperation like the rest of us. If 2018 is going to be great, not great again, but great, You'll need to step out of the boat now and then. Take a risk now and then. Even do something that looks downright foolish now and then. When Penny and I flew back from Georgia last Sunday, we took an Uber from the airport. And it turns out our driver was from Russia. I don't mean just culturally Russian. He was a real live Russian. And most of you know how fascinated I am by Russia and Russian culture. So we had a wonderful chat together. His English was excellent. So we figured he'd been here for a couple of years or so. But he told us he'd only been here about six months. I asked, so what brought you to the States? And he said, I kid you not, the American dream. And I thought... Could I have done what he did? Could I have dreamed a dream and picked up my life and transplanted it to another country 6,000 miles away? Heck, it was scary enough for me moving from Georgia to the wilds of Illinois. Yet he had taken the risk. He had stepped out of the boat. He chose to live the life he had been given right now. Near the end of Thornton Wilder's famous play, Our Town, one of the characters, a young lady named Emily, reflects on the fleeting nature of life, and she says, Oh, Earth, you're too wonderful for anybody to realize you. And then she turns to the character called the stage manager and asks, Do any human beings realize life while they live it every, every minute? And the stage manager replies, No. 
The saints and poets, maybe, they do some. Well, in 2018, I want to live more like those saints and poets. Oh, I know I'll never realize life while I live it every, every minute, but at least I can risk it more often than I do now. With all the changes coming to my life this year, I need to risk it. And how about you? Are you facing forward? Or are you facing backwards? Just remember, modernity's scary. Antiquity's worse. Can't go forward, can't reverse. So here's a plan to ease your unknowing. Ride the horse in the direction it's going. As we ponder those words, I invite you into a time of silent prayer and reflection.
please join me in our prayer of dedication. Loving God, we offer you our gold, the morning on the wing, the glow on the faces of children at play, the shining moments that brighten our lives. We offer you our frankincense, the quiet reassurance of familiar things, the grace of care and friendship, the blessing of bread and our hearts yearning in prayer. We offer you our myrrh, the ashes of our dreams, the bitter taste of our failures, the shadows through which we stumble. Transform our inadequate gifts that they may be an acceptable sacrifice of praise and transform our lives to reflect more deeply your justice and joy in the life of the world. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> As we come to a new calendar year and we have a new year lying before us, let us gather at this table, the table of the Lord, and remember whose we are as we connect as a community and remember the blessings of life in Christ. Come, the table is ready. Would you bow with me in prayer? Great and wonderful are your deeds, O God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O ruler of the ages. We give you thanks, for you have created all things, and by your will they exist. You have delivered your people from bondage, and you've given to us Jesus Christ, Lamb of God, Savior of the world, who has won for us the victory over sin and death and all evil. Spirit of God, touch our lives deeply and make us truly yours, and bless these gifts of bread and cup. O living Christ, bright morning star of this darkened world, come and be our guest. Name us, mark us, and claim us as your own. Free us from bondage to the powers of this world. We give you glory in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray and continues to teach us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. The scriptures tell us that on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, that he took bread and he blessed it. And he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat for this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks again. And he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you. Drink ye all of it. I always love saying this. These, my friends, are the gifts of God for all, and all means all, of the people of God. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. And blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who gives to us the fruit of the vine. Amen. This is the cup of salvation. Take and drink and know the blessings of a life in Christ.
please join me in our prayer of gratitude. You have given yourselves to us, Lord. Now we give ourselves for others. Your love has made us a new people. As a people of love, we will serve you with joy. Your glory has filled our hearts. Help us to glorify you in all things. Amen. Lunch? You can. Okay. All right. Uh, there's lunch downstairs. It's a uh, crock pot, right? Uh, it should be a lot of fun. So come on down and eat your fill and help out the uh, youth for the mission trip this summer. Take the hand of your neighbor, please. I'm not going to take Lois's because she's sick. Uh, but you take the hand of the person close to you. This week and through 2018, step out of the boat. Step into a risk. Focus your eyes on Jesus. And don't worry, because God upholds you all. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>